many new women alone and, and talk about churches. I don't know how you worship here. You know, but church is back home. It's so much fun. You know, you go to church on Sunday, you know that maybe one drama will happen. You know, because there's always drama in church. There's always fun. You know, sometimes it comes in the form of the testimonies that people come to give. I don't know, do, do they do testimonies here in church? Like people come to give testimony. You know, you guys are living the good life, so I don't need testimony. Uh, things are good. You know, back home, testimony. You know, now, nowadays churches censor it. They, they, they screen the testimony. They, they, they call you, hey, what do you say God do for you? Let us hear. Before you tell the whole church and embarrass us. You know, but those days it wasn't like that. I, I'll quickly round up. I know I don't have so much time. Those days it wasn't like that. So they would just let people just come and give testimony. Until, okay, thank you. Until one day, a, a church pastor was to, totally embarrassed. The first person came, it was a young girl. Praise the Lord. We say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our Lord is good. We saw all the time. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, I will not lie. Before, before I be a shower. Hey. This was in church. Now, if you're Nigerian, you know what a shower means. A shower is prostitute. And this lady was telling us in church, before, before, I be a shower. I don't do a shower, do a shower, do a shower. The pastor was now giving them sign to cut her off, cut her off. <laughs> so they switched off the mic. I said before, before, I don't do a shower for a ketchup. They took the mic back. This, the mic was off at this point. They removed. Because how do you now, you know, there are children in church for goodness sake. I know some of these kids, they are very intelligent. They ask too many questions. Some were already beginning to ask their parents, Mom, what's a shower? What's a shower? <laughs> How do you not begin to explain to a child what is a shower? <laughs> I know these kids, no answer is enough. You tell, even if you tell them, look, a shower is somebody who says something to somebody for something. They, they'll still ask you, what is something? So, there's no need. <laughs> so, so, they removed the girl. Next, the mother of the girl came. Praise the Hallelujah. This is where my daughter they talk. This is a shower problem. When it started, we were all surprised. We say, Hey God, how can this spirit of a shower be in our family? She continued, the pastor said, Come. <laughs> so they cut off the microphone again, they moved her out. So they said, Allow the young man. So this time a young man came forward. <laughs> Who praise the Lord with hallelujah. Who praise the Lord with hallelujah. Our Lord, 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 Lord. The Lord is good. We saw the time. Just talk. You know you're having difficulty speaking and you're doing all this praise the Lord. Our Lord is good. Just go to the point. Say, ma, 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 ma. Who my brothers and who see who see who see who sisters in the Lord? When I started, oh, 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 I used to do who to do who to do who to do. I used to stammer where where. He? I was confused. But who who one who one day who my friend who. Well, my friend brought me to this church and the hope of a hope of a hope pastor laid hands on me and who pray who pray who pray who pray who 
recuperate for me. <laughs> and since that day, I no longer hold stop, 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 stop. Usher has just carried him and the microphone. <laughs> and moved him out of the church. <laughs> what kind of human being is this? At that time, the pastor, <laughs> the pastor had to come on top of the, this thing and said, no, no. Uh, brothers and sisters in the Lord, uh, brother, hallelujah, hallelujah, uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, I don't know the devil, I don't know what the devil is trying to do in our midst today, but the spirit of God is here. <laughs> the, pastor, the pastor had to correct, I didn't, I didn't perform any of those miracles. I don't know them, I don't know where they're from. <laughs> yeah. You know, stuff like this happen. Then a friend of mine said to me, okay, you know this Christmas, we're having harvest in my village. You have to come with me. You know, you've not been to my place. We've been friends. I said, okay, no problem, I'll come with you. So we have this harvest service. Now, you know, if you're from Nigeria, you know how harvest, harvest service is, especially in the villages during Christmas or festive period. It's, it's a very big event. Harvest is when people actually take their first fruits or whatever they produce and they go to church and they offer, you know, to God. And when the church gathers all those things, they do bazaar sales, proceeds from that, they put back in the, into the development of the church. So we went to their village for harvest. You know, nice service, nice people, happy people, lots of singing and dancing, you know. Now, the drama that played out in that village, there's this young man who was in the business of making coffins, casket. But for a very long time, business was not moving. People were not dying as expected. <laughs> and he had projected and he had made so many coffins, expecting that as usual, but people, I think the standard of living probably improved. So people were not dying like that. And these things were beginning to pile up. So it was harvest. And that morning he talked to his wife. You know, that week he talked to the wife and said, business is not good. Though. And this harvest, we must give something to God. But wait, oh, it's what you produce that you give to God. The wife said, yes. He said, we'll take some of these things that we've been piling up here. We'll go and present it before God. If God does not like the offering, let him change our situation. And it made sense. So for variety, they took two coffins, one small one, one big one. Refurbished it. Repackaged it, redesigned it. And took it to church. Made it look very beautiful. But as they were arriving church on Harvest Sunday, even the ushers and the warden were surprised seeing two people carrying coffee. They said, ah, where are they going? Where are you going to with coffee? It's, today is not for burial. This is Harvest. They said, no, we are not here for burial. These things are for Harvest offering. Hey, who gives coffee to God? <laughs> they say, well, this is what we produce. Don't you know us? It's my handwork. What you do is what you bless God with. After all, other carpenters are bringing chairs and furniture. So, ah, they let them in. So they came into church with their two coffins. And of course, as they took their position, their people left that session for them. <laughs> <laughs> what do they care? They're used to sleeping amongst those things. So them and their family, they were there. Service progress, time for offering. People were bringing their produce. Plantain, eggs, oranges, whatever you were producing. People were just piling it up. Choir was singing. The man called him, my man Kechi, let's go. So she carried the smaller one. The husband followed with the big one. They approached the altar of God. The priest saw them from there. He was surprised. Catkist, what is... What is it? We told them all this. But that's what he does. Like, okay, allow him. He brought it. Now, after service, all items out to the church field for bazaar sales. So they came to me. They say, okay, we know you're an MC. You're going to help us today. You know, auction some of these things. I said, if that is what I would do for God, no problem. So we went outside. People were seated like this. We started with the smaller items, the perishables, crates of eggs. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here today for bazaar auction. Crate of egg, number one, going, any bead, any bead, any bead, any bead. We need 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, going, 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 gone, gone. We sold off all the eggs, all the plantain, baskets, chair. We were just selling stuff. Finally, it was the two coffee swimming. <laughs> I looked to the harvest committee chairman. I say, what do I do? He said, sell it. <laughs> now, how do I market coffee? Well, I said I'll try. Yes, um, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we have two brand new coffins here today for sale. 
2017 model of coffin. We're going to start with the small one. This small coffin, very portable, well designed. The interior well padded, comfortable. You won't feel any stress while you're in it. Any bead, any bead, any bead, any bead from anybody, any bead, any bead, any bead. Everybody went cold on me. I tried for two minutes, no bead. I left the small coffin. I said, because it makes sense. Nobody wants their child to die. So I moved over to the big coffin. At least we have old people. People who are in their 80s and they should be preparing. That was so, so I thought. At least you think that everybody wants to go to heaven. At least some people should be preparing to die. But it's not true. So I went to big coffin. Big coffin here. This coffin, man, looking at it, ladies and gentlemen, is more than six feet long, which means no matter your height, you can comfortably fit in. And as you see, this coffin is durable, it's strong. You know, there's space. You can even make call inside this coffin in case you change your mind. You know, there's openings for air. You know, if you wake up and you need fresh air, there are holes here that you can... I hype, 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 hype. So any bead for coffin, any bead, any bead, any bead, any bead, anybody? Anybody with the first bead? Nobody. I'm looking into the crowd. I'm seeing old people and they are not responding. I said, these old people here, I don't want anybody be. They say, your father there. I say, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so I left the coffin for them. I told her, best committee chairman, I've done my best. He said, leave it. Now, you know, after harvest, whatever is left goes to the priest's house. <laughs> so harvest committee people packed up the coffin and proceeded to the priest's house. The priest was upstairs in his balcony when he saw them coming with two coffins. Say, get my lock gate, lock gate, lock gate, lock gate. I won't go lock gate, but lock back. Harvest committee approached the gate and they were knocking. The priest appeared from upstairs. Hey, what can I do for you? They said, oh, father, we are here. We are done with the bazaar sales. We have some items left. Just show us where to keep it in the compound. They say, keep for who? They say, for you now. He say, normally anything that is left will usually bring it here. No, he said, no, I dash harvest committee. Harvest committee can keep it. Harvest committee says, sir, we are not interested. <laughs> As we speak, that coffin day church road <laughs> belongs to nobody. <laughs> well, that's the reality of life. I guess you guys want to dance, so I won't take much time. Thank you very much. Bless you.